Okay, everyone, meteorologist Aaron Tuttle. I'm uh, just going to check a few things here while we're going, making sure things up and running. Okay, just give me a second. So basically what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, start broadcasting because uh, the storm out west of the metro um, does have a potential to produce a tornado. And because of that, uh, there are some indication looking at it on radar that it might try to spin up here pretty quickly. So I'm going to watch it uh, live here for you just to make sure it doesn't do that. And that way, if it does, you'll know immediately. So we're going to get to the radar here in just a second. So hang with me. Uh, tell your friends and family about the uh, feed, all that kind of stuff, and uh, get them up to date. And know that they can uh, check it out here. Okay. Looks good. good. All right. So we're up and running. Uh, that's good. That's good. I gotta hit, hit a lot of buttons back here, so just bear with me. Okay, take care of that. And that's done. Okay. Close that. This. All right. So let's get on with it. First thing I want to show you, of course, is the radar situation and let you know what's coming. Let's see here. Now, Oklahoma City, of course, we've had a couple little uh, piddly showers come on through uh, recently, but it's this line out here of the west, which at times on the tail end of it here, uh, has had a little bit of circulation with it. In addition to that, there's this little east-west boundary that's kind of going by from south to north. And so I was just real concerned that this might try to suck in this boundary. As a matter of fact, you can kind of see how it trails right here. So all that that's all it takes. A little extra vorticity, a little extra spin, and then something can quickly happen. So that's kind of why I was just taking a look at this real quick. So if it, we'll watch this for a while. If it turns out it's not going to produce from this little interaction, then that's fine, and um, I'll play it by ear. But uh, for a while there, it looked like it was getting pretty serious. So we'll have to see. It's the only storm really uh, that has the potential to produce anything around central Oklahoma. And this will pass uh, north of the metro. So uh, even if it became a hard right turner, uh, it would probably pass just north of Edmond and, and basically move over toward Edmond and Guthrie uh, if it moved in a more eastward fashion. Down here in um, southern Oklahoma, this little guy right here, uh, not much to write home about. Uh, but over time, as it worked its way from Ringling to Fox to Tatums, it had a nice mesocyclone with it, but an anti-cyclonic. It's a left mover storm, and it looked really good on radar. I almost got on here and pulled the trigger for a tornado warning. I was this close. Um, it had a really good 3D structure to it, uh, but I, it was it started off about 6,000 feet elevation is where I could see on the radar, and I don't have any eyeballs below that, so I wasn't going to do it. Uh, and, and there were a couple of storm spotters nearby and they didn't report anything, so I just kind of let it go. But I'm sure it probably produced a little bit of hail for you guys down there. Matter of fact, Ringling, it does say 1.75 inches of golf ball size hail reported. But uh, no official tornado touchdowns, but man, it was close. So that was our closest storm I've seen, and now it's moving to central Oklahoma. It's dying out. Now there are some additional showers trying to get going here, but they're not having much luck yet. The other big story is down here in southern Oklahoma. And uh, of course, you can tell where that action is located. So it's from Ardmore straight down I-35, and that'll eventually be heading on to Dallas-Fort Worth. Now here's Dallas-Fort Worth right here. It's quiet. Things are good. There's some storms to your southwest. Uh, these are some severe thunderstorms, but they're not any tornado producers, which is good. So we have to see what happens with that once it gets into a little favorable environment here during the next hour or two. Uh, and see what happens. Along this particular case, you live in Ardmore, uh, you're in the clear as far as anything tornadic goes, as this line of storms is now moving south of you through Overbrook and Marietta, and then down towards Thackerville, uh, between there and Marysville, and then of course the, uh, across the Red River. So like we talked about earlier in the forecast discussion, it's just kind of kind of skirt the Red River Valley from west to east, slight drift to the north. So again, this is for far southeast Oklahoma for the remainder of the evening hours. And last time I looked, there really wasn't anything rotating down here to get my attention. So there might be some wind, pockets of wind damage in there, especially up around this area just north of Marietta. Obviously some significant hail size, probably at least a, a dollar size. So, um, but then again, that's what the severe thunderstorm warning is for. 
Uh, matter of fact, uh, this particular storm, uh, movement is to the east at about 45 miles per hour. And they do have a, the wording in there for 70 mile per hour wind gusts and quarter size hail. So again, a little bit of minor hail damage with that storm as it moves through I-35. But again, if you're in Ardmore, you're fine. No problems there, no threat for a tornado. So really, the only thing that's had any attention to maybe impossible wall cloud was some stuff up here along the warm front uh, around Jet, but didn't materialize to anything. Of course, earlier we had a couple of tornado warnings far northwest Oklahoma. This right here is what we call kind of a, a, uh, a line echo wave pattern. It's a line segment. So it's not a true supercell. It's got some supercellar type characteristics on the southern end of it, but not quite uh, true. It's, it's a hybrid storm. And that's what happens when the shear isn't uniform in the atmosphere. And we talked about some weaknesses in the shear profiles that I talked about, but also mentioned how they would improve a little bit between the hours of roughly 8 to 10 when these storms are moving through. And if they could hold together, and if they stayed rooted, then they would have a potential to produce a tornado. Be a, um, you know, low-end threat, but it still would be there. So uh, what's what we're looking at right now. Okay, so Ogarchi, you're at the tail end. So if you were to look outside your window right now, you'd probably see it look like a wall cloud. Um, again, no reports of any tornadoes with it, of course. Uh, if there was, I'd be telling you otherwise. Uh, even the circulation on radar, which was pretty decent there for a little bit, has diminished. So it's doing some type of organization. Let me look at another radar view. So, yeah, not even good. I can back this up. Let's see. Right when it was around Gary, uh, there had a little bit of circulation there. Uh, a little bit after that as well. And then right about here, it started looking pretty decent, west of Wilkarchi. And then it fell apart. So about the time I decided to, get <laughs> to go on, it falls apart. Uh, that's the way it goes. These things can spin up and spin down really quick. Uh, but again, nothing to worry about as far as an imminent threat for a tornado, and that's good news. So you guys know what to do though if you do, and it's not to go outside and look at it and watch. It's to gather the kids and the dogs and pets and your husband, tell them, hey, get down that shelter. So uh, but we'll, we'll take this as it is. Uh, we'll kind of watch it here for a minute. And uh, like I said, I'm only on typically when there's a threat for a tornado or trails are ongoing. So if it looks like this uh, will diminish as it comes in closer to the metro, then I'll just sign back off. And if it looks like it'll, you know, if it starts to ramp up again or whatever, I'll, I'll come back on. But uh, for me to sit here and talk about a little bit of hail and wind for umpteenth minutes to an hour is, is not entertaining for either you or me. You can use my weather app to fill in the gaps on this stuff. You don't need to be told every 30 seconds, yep, it's got hail in it. In case you missed it 30 seconds ago, it still has hail in it. You don't even know that kind of stuff. You can just use my weather app for that. and It'll tell you, you can actually click on, put on the uh, arrows uh, when you're looking at the radar map and click those arrows. There's a little tiny box in each one. It'll tell you what's in the storm. It'll tell you how big the hail is. It'll tell you the, the storm track. You can actually tap that box that comes up. It'll give you a storm track. It'll tell you time of arrival. It's a really cool uh, feature. So make sure you use that. Some of other app, it's free. It's called AT's Weather To Go. If you don't have it, snooze you lose. You're late to the party. You gotta get on it. Do it right now. It's downloaded real quick. Won't tell you but a second. Uh, and it has proprietary algorithms that predict tornadoes before they actually occur. So for this particular case, if you're in the path of this storm, um, let's say, for example, you're in Okarchi, it's probably already warned you. It says, hey, dangerous storm approaching, uh, BTI number of uh, maybe a five. Uh, what that means is pay attention because it's rotation within the storm and it's increased and it did so west of you. All right, so now if you're in Cashin, uh, it'll give you the same type of warning, but maybe the BTI is only a three because it ramped back down. So that's kind of how that thing works. And we'll see if anything else comes out of it. Uh, but anyway, just kind of give you a, a educational heads up on that real quick. All right, I'm gonna look upstairs. Matter of fact, I'm gonna look upstairs, upstairs. Let's just see what this thing's got in it. Okay. Don't mind me, I'll get it quiet while I analyze this on the fly. And if I see anything that jumps out of me, I'm definitely gonna let you know. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at these different products that we can look at with the radar, can tell you where the rotation signature is, where the large hail is, all that kind of stuff. And right now, 
I'm not impressed with any of this. It's good. If I'm not impressed, you're not impressed. Right? Right. Okay, so the storm itself is a pretty tall storm. It's about 50,000 feet. DBZ values are rather low. They're in the red. Red indicates around 50 to 55 DBZ, which correlates to small to medium-sized hail, but not grotesquely large hail. So I think the biggest you get out of this is dollar size, maybe a freak golf ball, but typically you'd have to get more in the purple color to get some golf ball size hail, because that's where you get up to around closer to uh, 65 dBZ, I think it is. So uh, that was a look upstairs, and like I said, there wasn't anything really to, to tell you about, so I was kind of let it go. Uh, again, Oklahoma City is quiet right now. So here's, the, I'll show you what I'm looking at here behind the scenes. Let's see. So this is the uh, latest short-term model. And it has, let me see, that's the latest run. Do a little refresh. Okay, it is the latest run. All right, so uh, what it has is these little cluster of storms are watching now. And you see how it kind of moves to the east, northeast, and then it actually tries to get a little ump to it and build back down in Canadian County and then kind of hang in there and then move through Oklahoma County and literally fall apart from between Canadian County and Oklahoma County. You're going, why is that? Well, there's still a cap in place. But you can look here uh, at, uh, this, is, this is midnight. Okay, so let me give you the timeline here. This is basically, this is like 10, 11 o'clock. But um, uh, about 10 o'clock. But uh, once you get into 11 and 12 and the, the thing moves by and dissipates, after midnight, a secondary, more elevated type uh, line forms as the cold front moves through. And this has it on the south side of town and then points east. Now, this won't near, nearly be uh, as severe wise as the other. You might have a little bit of tiny wind and some small hail, but uh, you won't have like what we have out ahead of the cold front. And the reason for that is the cold front undercuts the updraft strength so that the storms can't get that strong. Now, the model has done this as a uh, for tomorrow. The upper level wave moves by. Okay, so it does trigger some isolated showers of thunderstorms with it. So you see this right here. Now, this is a caveat. I have not looked further into this, but sometimes on a northwest flow event, you can get storms that rotate and they'll produce wall clouds. So do not be surprised if some of these in the mid-afternoon come through and they have a little rotation with them. And yes, sometimes you get a freak tornado out of it. Now, I haven't looked anything beyond that. That's just what I'm looking at um, just, in theory, and just in general. Because once we really kind of get into June, that's when we see more of those type of events. Not, not this time of the year, um, but I just want to throw that out there, and I haven't really looked into details, so we'll have to do that later. But um, anyway, for tonight, that's the uh, focus here right now. It's the next couple hours with this little cluster moving through. You can see down in southern Oklahoma, that stuff around Ardmore, see where it goes? Kind of poofs, hangs around the Red River, and kind of dies out. So, and then far, far southeast Oklahoma gets some action on into North Texas. Speaking of, I do have some followers down there in North Texas, and you guys are probably going, all right, what about us? Well, let's see what the latest model data does for you. Um, let's see. You know what? I don't like this one. So let's do this. By the way, that's the look at the water vapor loop, which shows some dry air has moved in. And typically that helps aid the cap and helps to limit the uh, thunderstorm threat. Uh, let me look at that, by the way. Soundings, SPC. So here's the sounding. Um, let's see. Nope. Not much of a cap at all. Surprised. Now, temperatures have cooled a bit since then, so you'll have a teeny tiny cap. But um, the significant hail parameter is up around four inches in diameter. So there's some potential there for some very large hail. Uh, as a matter of fact, I found a case study going back, uh, it looks like with a five inch size hailstone with it. That's crazy. So it does not have anything like that right now. Um, it's not in that stage of maturity. It's been in a weakening stage. Uh, but anyway, the, the atmosphere still is still pretty uh, unstable. Still has some decent wind shear. So anything's possible with this. And yes, including the potential for a small tornado. Okay, so let's see. Storms moving. Weather Service mentioning how the storm's been more of a wind maker rather than a hail maker. Yep, we discussed that. Uh, still has probably an hour and a half. Okay. All right, so just watching that storm in the west. Okay, so Dallas, I mentioned you guys. Let me get on you. And you can see how things are progressing for you. And I'll show you a live radar here as well in a second. Because you guys do have a threat for tornadoes down there still to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So, let's just go forward in time. I don't like that. All right. Now, you see this big cluster of storms down your southwest in the hill country? You see that kind of lines up more of a squall line, moves up to the north and east. A um, couple things you want to notice here. This bow structure here, this bow structure here, that typically indicates uh, straight line damaging wind, sometimes around 80 miles per hour, sometimes a little higher. So that's what you've got moving on in to your area. Uh, now, we'll see how long those bows hold because they don't always maintain that look. They kind of ebb and flow. Um, but it's a, it's basically a jet max kind of punching through, down through the thunder, thunderstorm core and then they, like breathing out on you. You don't want that. But anyway, so let's go move on through. This is what time for Dallas Horse. This is uh, literally 11, 12 o'clock. So it's a late show for you guys as well. The good news is the model continues to weaken it west of you. I mean, it's going gangbusters around 10 o'clock, 9 to 10 o'clock hour. But once we head in toward that 10 to 11, it really starts to weaken as it comes into town. So that's looking like good news for you guys. Then it's got some heavier storms bubbling up. Bryan College Station, Hearn. Um, back up toward you know Tyler and Longview as we head toward the midnight hour and onward. So pretty nasty looking squall line down there, which will progress in Louisiana and Arkansas by daybreak. And it looks like a little bit of wraparound for you guys in the morning hours. All right, so that's a look at Dallas. Um, so the good news is model latest shows to be a lot weaker. Uh, as far as the uh, radar goes, uh, we can take a look at that as well. Let me just do this real quick. Okay, so the tail end of that stuff to your north, all these little severe thunderstorms basically have a wording of 60 miles per hour, inch and a half size hail. Uh, let me look at some of these hail reports. Uh, let's see, quarter size, half dollar, one inch size. So a lot of these are one inch size hail. Okay, but the warning has inch and a half up to, and then it's got, of course, pockets of damaging winds all up through, like I said, just south end of Ardmore. Okay, so that's that system. That's clipping, you know, north of Dallas, what we're Here's what you're looking for down here to the southwest. All these guys, Comanche, Hamilton, you know, they're they're just regular thunderstorms. There's nothing, not much of a bike to them. Most of the hail is pretty small. Let's see, an inch to an inch and a half in diameter. So not even close to giant size hail. So things aren't panning out like the model suggested as far as intensity goes. That's a good thing. It happens a lot. Um, it, um, you know, the more you look at model data, you know, you can get really excited about these parameters because they, they're off the charts, and then you get reality sets in, and they're nowhere close to what they promised. And they'll do this time and time again, and all of a sudden they'll get it right one time. You're like, oh, it's just enough to where you believe them most of the time, that kind of deal. So anyway, the good news is the threat down here is a lot less uh, than Prague, and we'll see how things materialize over time. So let me go back up here to uh, Oklahoma City. Turn this radar back on, and we'll do a storm track for you for this. And while that's going, let's see. It's going to be, you know, for a... I don't think this thing's still moving as fast as it was, is it? East at near 40. That's pretty good speed. All right. Let's get this track on there. All right, Cimarron City and Crescent in the next uh, 30 minutes. Then Guthrie's right right after that. So then between the next now and 30 minutes, basically from Kingfisher East, Northeast to Guthrie. So if you live in these little communities around here, that's what you're going to have along Highway 74, 33, that kind of deal. And right now it's for a thunderstorm, which has... Um, got some mid-level rotation that's what this tornado vortex signature uh, icon means but it, ha it gives me numbers and values it gives me the height the depth and all that until those numbers go up through the roof I don't worry about it so just because you have maybe one of those little fancy radar apps on your phone for example where you look at some of these radar programs and you see that it does not necessarily mean you know it's a tornado these things trigger a lot uh, a lot of them are false alarms uh, some of them are decent Okay, so back down here. I 
Yeah, I'm just uh, not impressed. This thing's really weakened. So that's good. It's also lined out. Lined out meaning it is north south. So until this thing were to become more of a hook, like this, we don't have to worry about it. And it has no indication it's even going to happen. Let me look at the um, vertical wind structure though currently. So the winds here are adequate. So I'm looking at this column here. This is most recent from the radar. So you have a uh, south-southeast surface wind, goes due south, then goes south-southwest, southwest, and southwest, and it picks up speed a little bit. So the shear is actually decent to try to produce a weak tornado. However, this storm has to get rooted in the boundary layer, and it looks like maybe that's not happening, and maybe that's why. But sometimes this happens. I mean, you can have an environmental variable that suggests, you know, tornado potential, and then it doesn't happen. And that's because of all the uh, variables. We only know, I wouldn't say a tiny fraction. I would even say, you know, most of them. <laughs> I would say somewhere in the middle because we have yet to crack the code. So we're trying. So more studies, more research, and we'll get there over time. Uh, let's see. All right, so again, if you're watching, this is just a live severe weather coverage at a storm that was ramping up there for a little bit, meaning that the mesocyclone was on the tail end of it, was tightening up and starting to interact with the boundary. So I thought maybe it might produce a tornado real quick. So when it jumped on for that, and then it turns out it, it, it um, the boundary went by, no interaction with it, which is uh, odd. Usually they do. So that tells me it's not rooted. I think if it was rooted, it would have done something. So. Um, but that's good. It's good for us here in the metro. All right, so some storms roll up through Enid and Medford. You guys are going, hey, what about me? All right, well, what about you? Let's take a look real quick. Take a look at Vance, which is a radar up here, the next rad site. And we'll get a close-up view, see if there's anything in these. Other than probably some small hail. And I, I have to tell you guys, um, as a meteorologist... Remember, not, not as just a layman watching, but as a meteorologist that sees the data, sees the forecast, sees the hype, sees the chit chat, you know, all behind the scenes stuff, this is a very uh, poor outcome of what was overly promised, is what I'm trying to tell you. So um, it's not, you know, a widespread, you know, deal of just Armageddon. So yeah, we've had some pockets of hail and wind. That's normal this time of the year. Severe thunderstorms happen in, in our, you know, this time of the year. So that's, that's not unsurprising. We have a couple of tornado warnings uh, out in western, northwest Oklahoma. This particular case looks like, let's see, we've got some decent wind coming out of this Pond Creek region. So looks like close to 60 miles per hour. Uh, so from Medward South through Jefferson and toward Hunter, a little bit of wind with that. This is measured around a thousand feet off the ground, so it looks like some of that's probably making its way to the surface. So you guys will get a little bit of straight line winds with that, uh, but no tornado activity. Looking up here into Kansas, uh, no tornado warnings up there, which is good. They had a port of a wall cloud a long time ago, um, and then a little uh, land spout tornado is what they called it, which is on the leading edge of the line. So a little bit of vorticity thing not necessarily a mesocyclone generated tornado. Almost kind of like a QLCS tornadoes. So anything along the leading edge of the line is not a true mesocyclone style tornado. Either they're QLCS or they're land spout or we have all these fancy terms. To you, if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. Well, all right, if you got a spinning column of air and it's kicking up stuff, guess what, it's probably a tornado. So that's why it's called a tornado. All right. On down south we go. Again, nothing to write home about, so that's good. Just some heavy shower storms moving on through. All right. Uh, let's see here. Anything else of consequence? Nothing out here. By the way, there was some flooding up going on in uh, this area. Let me show you the storm total. Do I have that on here? I have to open up that other one. Oh, I'll go with the other one. 
maybe I could do this one better. I think this has got Zeph Storm total rainfall. Mm. No, but maybe this does. Yeah, I think. Precipitation, storm total, precip. Okay, done. All right, now let me switch radars. I'm gonna show you how much rain has fallen up here into uh, northwest Oklahoma. Okay, so this little area here from Freedom to Avard, three inches, four inches, uh, close to three in Freedom. Uh, let's see, some of these pockets up here is four and five. Once you get up here, just east of Buffalo. So because of that, uh, the National Weather Service issued a uh, flood advisory or flood warning for this. So because of the um, situation there, and that goes until 945. So even though the heaviest of the rain has ended, the information or the leftover residual will continue. So flash flood warning for northwestern Alfalfa County. Let's see, they canceled that one. And they continue for Harper and Woodward counties. Um, let's see, radar indicated a lot of rainfall. Rainfall's decreased, but uh, runoff will continue. So, if you guys live up there, you've been dealing with some flash flooding briefly. The good news is, heavy stuff's over, but it really kind of dumped quite a bit on you. If you look up here, you can tell exactly where that warm front was, can't you? They're just basically right around here. That, that front really didn't move, and so those storms just anchored along that boundary and rode it southwest to northeast and produce some very heavy rainfall. Oh, I do see a tornado indication up here. Let's see what that report is. Uh, let's see, brief land spout tornado touchdown. This is a different one, different location. Then lifted up in open country, lasted less than a minute, traveled less than a quarter mile. So there you go. So we had a couple of tornadoes here along this uh, stationary front, which I talked about uh, being one of the areas. So that's two in Kansas. And then we had one just crossing over Oklahoma near Arnett. Um, and that was, I think, a couple on the, on the ground briefly and so far officially I think those are the only official tornadoes I know there's a warning for another one but I don't think it actually touched down if I'm mistaken I'm mistaken but I think I'm not mistaken um, but we'll see but anyway so like I said just a few tornadoes on that deal uh, down south we'll have to see if anything comes out of that right now it's kind of in a clustered pattern so not not likely okay so let's get back on radar uh, let's take a look at this yeah, this thing's kind of falling apart. Now, if you recall, the uh, models did have this thing falling apart in my prior discussions. So um, this morning, lunchtime, and then last night, night before. So one of the models I used did a really good job at nailing this, uh, this system, everything about it. And there were several to pick from, and I picked this one because I thought this was the most likely outcome. So thumbs up on this one, and um, you know, so far it's gonna be all right. Heading down south. Some big hails, you know, cluster of hail, I should say, northwest Texas in those early storms. Later storms really haven't had much in the way of hail reports. Let's take a look. So if you're still watching, uh, if you're still watching my coverage, well, if you're watching, you're still watching. Uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> and uh, like I said, if there was some tradles on here, it'd be a little bit more... Um, exciting for you but right now it's just garden variety it's typical springtime thunderstorms so uh, I guess it's north of Dallas Gainesville area it's a pocket of some hail south of Thackerville the one down here in southern Oklahoma is weak uh, pretty pathetic looking there's a little bit of a bow though right here so it might have a little bit of wind coming into Kingston that's about the most I can get out of that one for you here's a track on that uh, let's see Mansville six, uh, 904 coming up in Oakland Medill Ravia, Kingston, Shamingo, Woodville, McBride, and Milburn the next half hour. So there you go. So here's a look at that northern fringe. Um, then eventually, of course, whatever's left of it hanging toward to Durant. I don't think it'll make it to a toke. If you guys are in a toke, it'll pass to your south and likely fall apart anyway. And the models did have it falling apart once you get uh, about toward the Durant area, just used to there anyway. Okay, let's see. In Dallas, things are quiet. I had my cousin down there going, hey, is it really going to do something down here? I said, yeah, actually, all the 
all the uh, parameters are there, kind of like here in Oklahoma City, but it's just not coming together. Let's switch on over to DFW. All right, here's a closer radar view, so we get a better look at these. Uh, probably this hail. Look at this probe. 62 to 64, 65 dBZ. That's a pretty good hail. Uh, like I said, that's probably golf ball size. What's this? Uh, got a couple reports. I don't know if it went through that little area. Yep, there we go. Look at there. Golf ball size, 1.75. Every now and then, I know what I'm talking about. Just every now and then. Not in life in general, <laughs> just when it comes to weather. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so Southwest uh, Dallas, these guys are still rocking and rolling, but uh, most of the hell's a little smaller, most of it, except there was a pocket there, might be golf ball, Southwest Stevensville. A little bit of pink there in the radar trend, but that's about it. So we'll see how this thing goes for the heads into Dallas. Like I said, it's only nine o'clock. So it's just now knocking on your door. So the next couple of hours, we'll see if it fills in. Models don't seem to think that uh, it'll it'll gain strength too much. Okay, so back in Oklahoma, let's take a look at this. If you guys here in the metro. Wind speeds, 50 miles an hour. That's all you got. Oh, oh there's a 70. What, how far off the ground is that? 2,400 feet. It's a little high. So I don't think that's going to be hitting the ground. But uh, just going to show you, there are some good winds with this. So the warning, which probably has 60, is going to be valid. Let's take a look real quick. Uh, hazard 60 to 65 mile per hour wind gusts. Well, there you go. Okay, so that's going to be coming into Cashin, by the way. And then eventually here to where Guthrie. I'll do a storm track for that also. And look at this radar too. Hey, what happened? Where'd you go? Give me back my data. There we go. Okay. Uh, again, nothing on the tail end of this guy. Some new development, though, here in Canadian County. Kind of similar to what the model had, but not really. But now, if you notice, this appendage down here on the tail end, this little green line, this enhanced line is an outflow boundary. So what happens is there's cool air behind this line. So anything right here that develops... Basically, it's, it showers, it storms some updrafts that get lifted up over that line then develop back behind it. They will not be severe. They can't. They can't. They're, they get cut off from the inflow. So the inflow is over here, and they get nothing and like it. So they're nothing to worry about. You have to have something that develops along this line and stays on the line or out ahead of it to worry about. We don't have that. The guy up here north, he's the one producing or helping to produce that outflow boundary, and so he's still okay. But uh, so he's gonna have pockets of hail with it. As a matter of fact, here's one here in Crescent. Let's that uh, some probably some golf ball size hail. County Road 70, and it looks like it's two miles east of 74. So there you go. So that's about uh, one, two, three miles northeast of Crescent. Uh, level one little spot there east on 74, and yeah, a little tiny one there out in the middle of nowhere. And then down here in uh, Cimarron City, West, you guys, by the crow flies, one, two, three, four, five, six miles to your due west. Got a nice little pocket of hail out here. That's on the ground. Let me take a look and see how high that is. Oh, where'd that go? There it is. All right, so that hails up around 10,000 feet. So it, there's some right there holding at uh, 15,000. It's in an updraft region. These others are, are uh, falling down, so it's dropping its load. So this heavier hail here that's happening is dropping its load in this region. So by the time it gets to 74 between Crescent and Cedar Valley, may not be a whole lot left on that. Oops, I'll put that back up there. Okay, what do we have here? 
Okay, so what I'll also watch for, you see this little guy here? It's a little bitty indention, and it's on the northern fringe of this outflow boundary, so it's tied into an updraft area. Sometimes you get a teeny tiny little baby tornado spit, spit out out of that. So it'll be a little region to watch. Nothing right now that says that's going to happen. Just Sometimes you get these little things all the time, they do nothing. And every now and then you'll get one that does. They're very hard to catch, track, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, let's see. So I have to use a couple different radars just to catch it. Right now, nothing yet. Now, for those of you folks that watch The Walking Dead, you know that Maggie was written off the show, and I'm looking up on ABC, and I see her in some new show. I don't know what, what she's playing, but that explains why Maggie's not on that show anymore. <laughs> the actor. The, act, act, the name of the I mean, the, the character name. I can't remember her actor, actress name. But I don't think she's coming back. But I actually gave up on that show anyway. I thought the season was dumb. I don't think I'm over it. <laughs> I watched it long enough. I'm like, all right. How much more zombie apocalypse can you take? Especially when nothing changes. It's getting old. So, same old thing. I bet you their viewership drops for this next season. But just cut in half. Only the diehards would still watch it. And I'm finding out I'm not a diehard. So, anyway. See what else this thing's doing. Anything? Nope. So, uh, one thing you've noticed, the top of this broadcast, it tells you how to turn on your mobile device, your computer, to watch closed captioning. So it's a new feature I've added. So you'll have to enable that through the instructions above. And sometimes while you're watching the broadcast, especially on an Android phone, you can just click the three dots at the top right and say, hey, show me closed captioning. And it'll take it to your settings. You can always see closed captioning, which I believe it's supposed to work either muted or unmuted. I'm not sure. You'll have to toggle with that on your device. Everybody thinks it's going to be different. But like if you're in a board meeting, you know, and you can't hear it, but you want to hear what I have to say, that would be a good good way to do it. Obviously, you don't want to wake up the kids with the baby sleeping in your lap or something. That would be a good way to do it. So just uh, some options there. And, of course, uh, any of your friends or family hearing impaired, uh, that's also helpful for them. So I've had a lot of good feedback for that. Okay. Hmm. Take a look at the storm again. Been watching it evolve and change just of us sitting here. So little baby hell cores being suspended in these updrafts. So nothing too tall. Detected. Severe hail detected. Wind wise, not impressed. I mean, for as circulation goes, I should say. Mesos mesocyclone style. What about spectrum width? Noisy up top, but nothing down below. So the spectrum width product is pretty cool. And right now it's all elevated, it's all hanging up here around 40,000 feet. So, but when you have a tornado, you'll get that spectrum width down here at the surface between like surface and five, ten thousand feet and that's where the tornado would be. It's basically noise uh, because the particles are going so many different directions it emits that pattern for the radar to see so it's easy to pick it out. Matter of fact before we had all these other fancy dual pole things and stuff like this one, rotation, that's what you had. You had spectrum width and velocity and, and then a radar which had low resolution between those three things, you had to pick out the tornado. Okay, so there is a little bit of rotation signature on here, right here on the side I was looking at. So it's this little spot right here. But I didn't see anything else. This is going to be really confusing for you, but if I see anything, I'll break it down for you. But I got to look at something. Oh, that's terrible. Where, where's my thing? Hold on a second. Oh, because the winds are so weak. 
Okay. There we go. Uh, hmm. All right, we'll see. All right, let me get back to the um, this guy, this view. So what we're looking at was this little spot up here, east of Crescent. That would have been the circulation feature that was showing up there on that one product. This right here over caching is a nightmare of damaging winds. So these winds are actually colored over to, it goes over from 50 back down to 35. Good grief, it's 70, probably 70, maybe 80 mile per hour winds. Let me see. Let's see if the weather service has said anything about it. No. So let me go look at this other radar. That's interesting because that's close to this inflow notch. All right, I'm just going to watch see how these things progress. Uh, let me go back up here and let's take a look at that. This should be able to plot some winds for you. I'm trying to get one where the radar will unfold them so I don't have to just do math on the fly like I just had to and I can actually show you on the picture what it is okay so base velocity D alias let's see what this has so it was around cashins that we're talking about. All right, so this probe, 60, 63 miles per hour. That's the highest it's got on the alias. Storm relative, same thing. 60, oh, there it is, updated, 60. And let's see, let me look at the height of this, by the way. This is going to be right around 2,000 feet in elevation. Okay, so it means some of this won't be reaching its way to the ground, which is a good thing. Because that was a pretty strong wind there I saw for a minute. Yeah, this was the folded version. Okay, so let me tell you why. You see the incoming? That's, that's green blowing towards the radar, right? Red is blowing winds away from the radar. Well, it's not like what you're thinking, which is circulation, which would be, you know, green this way and red this way, which usually indicate a tornado. In this particular case, it's what happens when the color scale ends from the Nyquist velocity limitation, and so it just goes back to the other end of the scale. So it, it rolls over and goes to the red side. So that's why it, it trips and you got where it says 41, and you're over here was 45. Well, it's not. So. You have to know what the max limit is here on this one, which I think is about 65. Uh, and it depends on what, what mode they're in, but let's just say it's 65. All right, so I've got 45, which means some of this should be close to 65 before it rolls over. Um, but anyway, so this is 45. So it's maxing out here before it goes over to pink. And then the pink side, where are we? 37. So let's say this on this particular product is 45. So we got to go 45 plus... 45, whatever, and from 37, so that's another 8. All right, so you add that to 45, and you're back up to 53. So that's kind of how you roughly would do it uh, with this type of a product, which can be very annoying. But sometimes you can get a different uh, mode, and then it'll do the work for you. Now, like, for example, that's got 56. So that's how you do it. Here's some spots a little higher than that if I look really hard. But uh, anyway, so that, that was that. Let me go back to... The other thing I was looking at, which is this leading edge. All right. Okay, so that little rotation thing we saw. Oh, it was an looks like an artifact, possibly. Yeah, it could be a little side lobe action contamination. 
from the radar beam. And so I triggered that algorithm. It's a falsify. So that could have been what that was. All right, what's good? All righty, let's see. Stuff back building here toward Piedmont. Uh, heaviest DBZ is 54. Pair of very, very heavy rainfall. Teeny tiny pea size hail with it. Alpha boundary still down here, but nothing triggering on it. Uh, if we were to see anything at all for some monkey business, it's right here over Seward and then this moving east. But like I said, I've been watching like a hawk and nothing's happened. So that's good. Scroll down here real quick. What's going on in southern Oklahoma? Nothing. But remember how earlier I told you that thing was trying to bow out? So you get some straight line winds down here. So that's exactly what's happening. So you'll get 60 to 70 mile per hour winds with that as an automatic default. Uh, let's see. Uh, matter of fact, let's do a storm track on both of these. So we said this was moving last, I think we said it was east at like 40, wasn't it? Was this? Uh, I got a storm motion northeast at 50. Good grief. Okay. So let's do a storm track. miles an hour as crow flies so let's go three here in the next uh, well 30, 60 seconds <laughs> or so we got Perry Edmonton Langston Coyle Arcadia Stillwater Luther uh, Perkins Glencoe all between now and 945 so all in the next half hour and then that goes on down the line toward Tryon Ripley Warwick and Agra and Pawnee so there you go this line holds together that's just gonna get it over the next hour all right, let's go down to southern Oklahoma. And with that, pockets of some hail and pockets of some damaging winds. And then let's see, let's go down here. Same kind of idea. Let me see what the wording is on this one. Moving east at 29. Look at that, so a lot slower for this guy. Okay, so we'll take it from the threat area. A little bit of a northeast for trend, but not much. We said 29, didn't we? Let's go 30, call it good. Woodville, 917. Whitesboro, 920. McBride, 921. Sadler, Potsboro. Meade, Silo, Colbert, Nowood, Denison, Calera, Durant. Kennefic. Hmm. Armstrong. I don't remember Kennefic. <laughs> One thing's interesting about Oklahoma, you work here, you come across some names, let me tell you. And to try to pronounce those on the fly when you've never seen them before, that's something. You're going to butcher some names. That's the way it goes. All right, so there you go. Is your track for this, which again is a threat there for winds in excess of 60 miles per hour, straight line winds. So again, Ardmore, you're in the clear. I don't have to worry about that. It's all east of you toward Durant. Um, this continues, of course, on down to Gainesville. Let's see here. And then Dallas, you guys are still in the clear. Stuff's still out way out to your west, southwest. No tornadoes with that. Just some borderline severe thunderstorms. All right, so back up here we go. Boy, plethora of TVSs. So if you remember my comment to you earlier, Trado Vortex signature, you see that? Another one, Trado Vortex signature, Trado Vortex signature, you get a Trado Vortex signature, and you get one, and you get one. These are all garbage, but that's just the algorithm tripping their um, false, false ones on there. But that happens a lot, so it's not uncommon. Let's take a look at velocity data again. Oh, what have they done? Oh, get that off of there. So um, they've changed the radar to different PRF and it's having a tough time resolving the wind field out there on that mode. So let's go back to this one. 29, 28, it's up here. All leading edge. This stuff here that was folded over isn't as strong as it was before. Uh, this little pocket here, storm relative. There's one around 50, 52, 49. So like I said, it's not as strong as it was just 10 minutes ago. But by the way, if you live in Edmond, guess what's gonna happen? This little wall of wind from the south flow band is gonna come on through. It's right here. 
and it's coming this way. So you're going to notice a little pickup in your wind speeds. I now have a north wind myself here at the house, and I heard it pick up, and then it fall right back down. So right now I've got a whopping 10 miles per hour. So it was very short-lived. Here, reflectivity. Storms are way out here in southeast Oklahoma. Severe thunderstorm warning on those. Little wind, little hail, I'm sure. Status quo. Still a few up and going up here in uh, southern Kansas. Same idea. Oh, look, there's a trader warning. That would be our fourth one for third one for Kansas today that I know of. Uh, now this is just radar indicated, so there's no confirmation from a storm spotter. But it's way up there in eastern Kansas in Richland, right on that warm front we talked about. So remember, when you get a boundary, those are you want to watch. Warm front, cold front, uh, dry line, outflow boundary, as long as it's stationary. You know, if it's moving, um, it doesn't do you any good. Uh, but if it's sitting still, those have the potential or moving very slowly and the storm can stay anchored on it those are the ones you have to watch for for tornadoes so you typically never want to be on a boundary ever you want to be on one side or the other <laughs> but not splitting the difference so okay so again some good hail coming in around mole hall just northeast of there between there and orlando so uh, let's take a look you know what? This might be able to tell me the hail size. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. And it's a little, sometimes it's product, it's a little delayed. Two inch size hail potential uh, with some of this is what the algorithm was showing. And the percentage possibility of severe hail is about 76 percent that's pretty high and up here also 86 percent so there you go the very stout confidence layer in the algorithms that we've got some rather large hail with these storms as they move east uh, let's see let's also oh here's an update just came in from south of orlando here we go this is when i was looking at a minute ago it just took a minute for the product update 1.7 inch size hail, so golf ball size hail. Remember that pink, purple area rather? That kind of coincides with that. When you see purple on my maps, think golf ball size hail. You see purple on other people's maps, think of heavy rain. I'm not going to say who they are. I'm not going to cause any drama tonight, but uh, normal radar reflectivity values don't um, make things look worse than they are. They stick with a generic standard color palette that most people go with. So that way it's easy to identify when you've got these hail, um, hail areas because you want to color code shading to course by you with your head. All right, when I see this, it means it's low 60, mid 60 dBZ values, which means, okay, a scalp all size hail. Um, if it gets a, uh, another color from that, like into the white, then you know you're getting um, the egg to baseball size hail. So it's a helpful tool for the meteorologist. Okay, so anyway, so there's some good hail coming up along this I-35 corridor between uh, 51 and 35, and also coming up on 36, Highway 36, all east of Orlando, Mole Hall. All right, let me see what that looks like. Oh, and also, okay, that's the Bow Echo down south. Let me go back up here north, take a look at this. Uh, no bowing necessarily just yet. Kind of starting to get that appendage right here on Orlando and Perry, just to, maybe about a little bit, but not overly impressive. Now right now the radar beam is paralleling this line. That can be good and bad. Um, sometimes it can help pick out these little indentions where you can get a little QLCS type tornado. So there's one, there's two. But I don't see anything that would indicate that. There's just little little notches. But sometimes those notches can turn into something. Uh, right now they're not. That's what I would watch for. Okay, anything happening here? Nope. Still outflow dominated, still linear segment looking um, structure. Nothing new is developed here in central in the metro, but something looks like coming up out here. Could that be that other round that we saw forecast in model data to develop? 
Now this is on the tail end of this outflow boundary right here. You see how this the high, the the enhanced and this reflectivity stops just west of Mustang. That's where the boundary loses its oomph. So that means down here, this air is largely untapped and it's residual of maybe the tail end of this. In other words, a storm could form here. This could go on by. Uh, since it's weak, what I, I told you I measure what 10 miles per hour or something. Um, the winds are from the southeast that could uh, reestablish this air mass favorably for this guy, should he develop. And that would be coming into the window here between 9 and 10 o'clock, so that would fit the, uh, fit the uh, situation. So we'll see what happens with that. But it's going to be a minute. All right. Anything happening here? One of the things I'm just kind of waiting to make sure we don't get is a QLCS train out of this. Um, they spin up really fast, last sometimes just a minute. All right, let's do a, another storm track on that guy. We have a new warning that came out for this. We'll see what the wording is. Uh, northeast at 52. Still got hail up to one inch and winds up to 60 miles per hour. Okay. So let's do this. And this is starting to bow just a little bit right there. So what that can mean is a little better shot of seeing some damaging straight line winds. So coming through Stillwater at 940, just about 15 minutes from now. You got Morris in there at 942. Uh, eventually heading up toward the Tulsa area. Down on down the line, not in this list, but after 10 o'clock around Mounds or Mumford, and then um, heading in the west side of Tulsa. So add another hour to that, and it'll be in that region. Whatever's left of it, if it's still going, by the way. Uh, but anyway, so there you go. There's your list of communities so you're gonna get some pockets of wind and hail with this that's been the uh, thing so far there's a little cell we talked about here west of the metro trying to get going it's, it's doing its best it could actually you know develop rather quickly 15 minutes is really all it needs to go from nothing to you know nice and red and scary looking on radar down south Little guy down here still trucking. So let's see, let's do another track for him. And now they've changed the storm motion. Oh, come on. Earlier was what, 29 or something? Now they're back to 48. Yeah, it is what it is. So we'll do one at 48. Oh, oh, how did I do that? Let's try that again. Okay, we're going to get there. <laughs> Come on, Aaron. All right, here we go. What did we say? 48? Oh, I'll just do 45. So, um, there you go. So, Durant, uh, 943. Caddo, 951. Caney, 955. And uh, Mead at 932. So, again, straight line winds with this one. That means winds in excess of 60 miles per hour. Now, remember, straight line winds can do as much damage as a small tornado. So they're still pretty significant. So you want to stay away from the windows, uh, that kind of deal. Clear that out. All right, big picture across the state. Like I mentioned in my discussions, we had two areas to focus on. We had the northern area along the warm front that would eventually sag south. We had the area way down south here in northern Texas that would kind of hug the Red River. And then we had that little area out here, which I thought would be favorable, and that went like this and into central Oklahoma, but on the north side, and bypassed the metro and head up into the Guthrie region right now, and with a little bit of wind and hail with that. So that was our three main areas to watch for us. Down south in Texas, these are all severe thunderstorm warnings. So Dallas Fort Worth, again, no tornadoes anywhere near your area. That's good. Let me take a look at the wind field. Um, around here again. Curious. Oh, what I just do? Oh. I'll do that one. Let's do this one. 
Okay, see how the winds are. All right, so at the surface, they're not as backed as they were before, kind of more subtly than southeasterly. So that is that limits a little bit of turning, but they're still pretty decent on the speeds. They're not overly strong, but they're decent enough to have a rotating updraft. Then here's what happens: you get up here around is in thousands of feet, so we're up at 18,000 feet right here. And this goes up from 18,000 feet to 35,000 feet. These winds are more southwesterly. All right, now the good news is, well, it's not good news, but the for a storm, the good news is they're at least 50 knots and they get higher. The storm needs strong winds up here. However, ideally for supercell structure, for pretty structures and everything in tornadoes, you want more of a west wind, west to east, and these are southwesterly. So that, that, that hurts the tornado and the storm uh, potential. So it's not perfect. And remember, tornadoes, everything has to be perfect most of the time to get some to form. We're talking about the real, the real ones, you know, the, not, not these little baby spin ups and leading edge of something. Those are just little vorticity things, the tubes that gets caught up in an updraft. So it has nothing to do with a storm generated mesocyclone style tornado. Wait, look at that. Look how, like, remember what I told you? 15 minutes, it'd go from nothing to red. It happened. That was quick. That's how um, unstable the atmosphere is here in central Oklahoma. It's impressive. Now, is it on the boundary or behind the boundary? That's my next question. There's the boundary. Boundary sagged right here. Went up right on the boundary. Do you see that? Here's a boundary right here. This is where it starts to go up. And then it develops. Poof. But it's riding north of, the, of this boundary. So this boundary is still kind of moving down here. This storm would need to suck it up in an updraft to stop it. Otherwise, the storm would get too far north of the boundary and it won't do much except for some hail, which is fine with me. I'm not trying to root for something. I'm just saying that's the outcome of that. All right. But yeah, that went from nothing to something there in a hurry, didn't it? Pretty cool. Weather's really cool, in my opinion. All right, I'm back over here in this guy. Let's see what this is doing. So, Union City little bit of pocket of hail, one, two, three miles on this north side, so just west of 81, and it looks like southwest 15th Street. A little bit of hail with that guy. All right, we'll see what happens. We'll keep an eye on this one for a little bit since I'm still on. And Edmond, let's see, you guys on the west side between Piedmont is getting that little elevated baby thunderstorm, so there's no real triggers on this for anything significant. There's some hail for half an inch in size, so basically P and maybe dom size hail. So like I said, pretty small. All right, so my focus may be turning over to this guy. Oh, what's this right here? See this right here, this tail end kind of goes in like this. So that's what I'm saying, the, this right here is the updraft region. And for a boundary, you would need the storm to mature strong enough to pull in these boundaries, and then it can actually do something. Um, okay. So weather service reading their thing, they were focused on more pockets of severe wind and less on significant hail with uh, future storms this evening. This one's going up pretty quick. This one is um, this one's going to watch here for a little bit. Okay, so where's that one going? Well, it's going northeast right now. Uh, it's got uh, let's see. Uh, let's just do a storm track for that one. It, what's the movement on this? Do I have anything? Uh, speed 45 knots of northeast. Good grief at 50. All right, you say so. We'll take it from where this uh, the mesocyclone would be, basically. If assuming that one were to develop northeast, at, we'll just call it 50. 
run it right along this little boundary. Now, it easily, if it starts rotating really hard, move more east, and that would violate this track. But right now, since it's moving northeast, this is the track I'm giving it. Union City, Yukon, Woodland Park, Bethany, War Acres, Nichols Hills, Village, all between now and 10 o'clock. So, next half hour. So, we'll see what that one does. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, that's what I was going to look at earlier was the downdraft gust potential. I got sidetracked. See if this product's being made. Sometimes these products aren't generated. Sometimes they are. And this one's not populating, so I'm going to assume it's not. Look at wind real quick. Mm, messy, but nothing. back in okay so where we had that little cell go up on that line right here well another one is going up just like this one now again as long as this line stays back here behind this boundary then it poses not much of a threat if it can get anchored on the boundary that's when it poses a threat and right now it's it's getting north of it, so unless it starts to intensify, it's going to not do so well. There's a little guy coming up here, Purcell Norman, just new, just out of the blue. So he's going. Whoa, how about that? Well, that's rude. Just, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Shut off my radar. <laughs> All right, then I'm just gonna close you. Why well, that's really strange? Why did I do that? I have no idea. Hmm. All right, I may have a memory violation or something, so I may have to stop this anyway. Well, I'm not really tracking a tornado, so I guess it's a good time not to, not to uh, worry about it. So I'll give it a second if it comes back, and. Uh, there we go. I yeah, I don't know what just happened with that. Close that. Okay, so well, that's being closed. Let's see. Still watching the scout here in Union City. He's going to let a little bit of hail with it. So algorithms up around an inch in diameter. So it's got some of that purple. So once you get that purple, if it's too high, then you end up with a little bit of golf ball action. So that's one thing to watch. So we're passing south of Arena on 81. And that's up around 29th Street, as we talked about a moment ago. Heading up toward Piedmont, and then eventually Cashin, West Edmond, and uh, then Guthrie, if it stays on its current path. There's that new little cell down here around Slaughtersville. Nothing doing with that yet. By the way, did this thing get stay behind the boundary? Yeah. Oh, it tried to pull the boundary in just for a second. It's still trying. It may. We'll see. If that doesn't do it, this guy down here, he might. So we'll see what these two guys are up to. Still plenty of time. Go down here to the end. Still nothing. Okay. All right. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a little break myself and um, do a little house camp cleaning, housekeeping kind of a deal. Keep an eye on this guy, and then I'll I'll get back on, assuming that either one of these develops into something, either big hail or potential tornado threat here the next hour, and I'll bring you back some more live coverage. Is that a deal? that work for you so like i said thanks for watching telling your friends and family very low-key approach to severe weather coverage if, if you are not comforted by the, my soothing voice i don't know what to tell you because you know like i said it's laid back i'm not gonna make a mountain out of a molehill i'm not gonna tell you stuff that's not true i'm not gonna say any minute now this is gonna do this or 
Yeah, this is gonna have some really huge hail in it. Actually, no, I'm gonna show you the hail and let's call it good. Okay, so um, I'm gonna come back on uh, because we've got some pretty significant wind in the northern parts of the state. Uh, Weather Service has upgraded their wording for that region uh, because of some damaging straight line winds in excess of potentially 80 miles an hour. Plus, I'm seeing what's probably some indications of some QLCS type tornado activity on the eastern side of that line. So I wanna go ahead and make sure that uh, you guys are good and covered there. So, looks like the stream's up and running. Uh, let me see which one was it, this one right here. <clears throat> so, okay, up here around Newkirk, um, this is just right around the border uh, here on into uh, Kansas right here. This is the Kansas-Oklahoma border. So just south of this border, uh, we've got these little pockets of uh, pink you see on the map. Well, those are winds in excess of 60 miles per hour trying to reach down to the surface. In some cases, there's 58. So the Weather Service thinks because of what's happening up here, some of these winds are going to pick up in intensity, and I agree with them. Now, what you can also see, and let me flip back over to reflectivity, what you're used to seeing. These little comma hooks right here, I picked up two of them really quick, and they've already dissipated. Here's, here's one right here at Newkirk. So this is how you get those little tiny QLCS tornadoes. That's it, that's all there are. There's not much to them on wind, but there's little little fingers along the leading edge of the line. And so that's how quickly they can show up and then disappear. But basically what this is up here is a comma shape, what we call the bookend vortex. So basically it's an area of low pressure that develops in this area. And what that does is it drives down mid-level air to the surface to create more of a straight line wind event of 80 miles an hour usually or higher so that can happen on these guys so they're they're be dangerous wind makers so and that's located up here all around the, the kansas state border so if you live up here in northern oklahoma east of newkirk uh granola schindler you guys are gonna have to deal with that uh down in pawnee little finger there like I said, there's a little baby finger there just west of Fairfax, and then there's one up here in Newkirk. So some of these can sometimes produce uh, little things. Let me go show you Dallas real quick. This is Dallas-Fort Worth. Uh, again, all in the clear right now. Storm's moving in from the southwest side of town. Just a little bit of hail, a little bit of wind. We've got up here on the north, probably the best-looking one right now. We'll see if it gets its act together. Uh, but right now, no uh, circulation that would be concerned with, but it'd be one to watch. All right, I'm going to go back up here in northern Oklahoma. And we'll take a look at that one. By the way, here in the metro, the storm we talked about, uh, it's the southern end of it is staying anchored to the line uh, down in here. Uh, that's what we talked about. It has to stay anchored to this boundary for it to actually have a chance of doing anything um, nefarious, and including just strengthening to produce some larger hail. The rest of these stuff, guys, went north of the boundary, so they're all up here. So they're just going to be some small hail makers, maybe some pockets of wind. Uh, and there's a severe thunderstorm warning out for this cluster. But it's, it's in a line segment. See this? It's a line segment. If it was just one storm down here like this and a big ball riding on the boundary, we'd have to worry about supercell trail type situation. But because it's a line event, sometimes you can get something in the south end, but right now the structure is not there to coincide with that. So um, get no threat here in the metro immediately right now. For anything like that but it's riding this little boundary right here which is an area of vorticity that goes into the subdraft region so if this storm can get its act together uh, and get surface base and all that which looks like it's probably going to uh, then that would be something to watch given the environment that we're in so if you look at the environment we're still in a south to southwest uh, field it's getting a little messy now because of the rain nearby on the radar, but uh, we got a good southeast surface wind here coming in from the city feeding into this, so we'll see what happens out of that. Okay, so back up here to the north uh, on these little guys here. Uh, let me look real quick. So, yeah, these winds up here around 79 miles per hour at what altitude? 5,000 feet. Whew. Let's hope it's not making it to the surface. My goodness. So, yeah, there's 70 there. All right, the so another one closer mm, no that's about it unfortunately there is a part here in northern oklahoma where the radar beam can't get down that low so we won't be able to see ground indications but it looks like a few thousand feet off the ground is the issue okay so let's see what that looks like uh if this guy's got it for you all right so there you go 
84 miles per hour. So that ramped up really quick. So we just talked about that a moment ago. Was it only like 60, 58, close to 60? I was maybe five minutes ago, and now it's up to 86 miles per hour. That's close to 90 mile per hour winds. Again, keep in mind though, uh, let me show you this. This is a, a key factor in this value, is that the radar seeing this, the range is around five, 6,000 feet. So thank goodness, uh, hopefully this isn't making its way all the way to the surface. If you get 90 mile per hour winds at the surface, you've got yourself enough uh, damage to rival a small tornado. So you do not want that situation. Uh, and sometimes it does happen, especially these little bookend vortexes. Um, so all this pink area is not good here on the east side of the squall line from Newkirk to Ponca City down to Red Rock, very windy up there for some damaging winds. And like I said, I can do as much damage as a small tornado, so that's why those things are covered pretty good. Now, the other thing I talked about, those little inflow notches, like here's one around Pawnee, uh, this little guy right here. So he might have a little rotation with him to one of those little QLCS type tornadoes. Um, odds are we're not gonna be able to pick it up. Like there is a little bit of green and red, but it's in a bunch of contaminated and range folded data, so it's gonna be difficult to make out. And again, we're looking about 5,000 feet and these guys usually aren't that tall anyway. They're just probably just a little under that. So it's right on the cuff. But yeah, you could just get a little small baby tornado out of that little spot right there uh, north of Pawnee just for a few seconds. That's kind of how that's gonna work. Um, you know, and you may never get a warning for that. You'll get a warning off my app that tells you there's a damaging twisting storm approaching or, you know, uh, danger storm alert kind of a deal. But you may not get an official warning from the weather service on these just because of what I just showed you. Sometimes the radar limitations uh, preclude that. Uh, let's see. I can look at this level two. Yeah. It'll be very, very difficult to see. So again, this right here is a little bookend vortex deal, a little area of low pressure. Uh, it's where the winds flow down around it, the backside, and sink and cause a lot of straight line winds. So that means this little area here then bows out and those winds come rushing down the surface. Now tail, this, this down here, this tail end, it's got a little bow to it too, but it's, it's not as influenced as this immediate region here. So even though the winds will be strong, again 60, so they won't be like 80 or so which is a big difference, believe it or not. All right, so it uh, looks like, what is that, a new watch that just went up? Severe thunderstorm watch, uh, let's see, yep. So that just issued here, and I'm sure that's gonna go on for the, till two o'clock in the morning, something like that, to cover this eastern side. No watch here for central Oklahoma. We do have this severe thunderstorm warning, though, coming on near the west side of town. So let me go back to this guy here. We'll take a look at the velocity structure data in it. Um, we'll see if this is, ends up being an inflow notch. This is where the boundaries are feeding into it. Right here. So this is where we'd watch to see if anything tries to develop. But right now it doesn't have the rest of the visual appearance uh, that's going to anytime soon. Uh, let's see, we got some good heavy rainfall moving in on the west side of town though. But as you can see, uh, this is uh, what a radar looks like with the red indicating, uh, let's see, value of around 52 dBZ. So all that is is very heavy rain. Uh, no hail with this unless it's going to be some very small pea size hail thrown in every now and then. But it will not be anything large uh, when it's that kind of a color. And I'm going to switch to the uh, next red and we'll see if that kind of jives. And I gotta switch sites here real quick. Um, all right, let's do this. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the um, these guys up here for a minute. Uh, matter of fact, let me before I do that, I'll do a quick track while the other one's loading up for the uh, storms in the metro. I've toggled back and forth between three different radar systems. All right, moving east at 58 miles per hour. Good grief. Okay, so that's what that's going to do. So let's get the storm track for that. All right. So. Why is this being weird? Let's try this. I don't know what is it doing. Doesn't like my storm track. 
Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> Fine, I'll go backwards. All right. So backwards, and uh, we'll just say close to 50. Actually, it was it was higher than that, wasn't it? Um, anyway, so there's uh, Schindler, Granola, Foraker, Paul Huskin, Elgin, all between now and really the next 20 minutes. Shave a few minutes off of these because I kind of shorten the track out. Um, but that's for the straight line winds coming in. So at least you know you know who's in the path of that. Uh, this one down here won't be as fast. So let's do that one. This one's more like the 50, so this is probably more accurate. Uh, Yale, Merrimack, Cushing, uh, coming in around 10.08. Oilton, Drumright, Cleveland, Osage, Hominy, Manford. There you go. There's Manford I mentioned earlier. Uh, so coming up in the next uh, half hour, you're going to see these uh, damaging winds coming on in about 60 miles an hour. So there you go. Okay, so back into Oklahoma City. Uh, let's go back in here and see what's going on with this. So we looked at uh, that one radar, which is a, a, a uh, airport surveillance radar, and now we're going to look at the next rad, and there's a little difference between the radar presentations. So the next rad does have pockets of some small, uh, rather some good sized hail thrown in, just a few, um, this little pink areas. So uh, one of these areas is going to be up around Britain Road, and uh, well, right between Northwest Expressway and the Kilpatrick. So that's where that's going to be a problem with a little bit of hail. Okay, so then we got another little spot um, down here south on the split from the turnpike and 40, so just north of there, about about a mile. And then you got the really large area of hail, East Union City between there and Mustang, right along 162 and Banner Road, and that stretches on down south to the river. So this little quadrant there, it's got the best hail with it, and that's because it's getting closer to the actual updraft regions, the core. So there's a good updraft region here and an updraft region here. This is one I will be watching because it's got the boundary interaction. This one's just Okay, so um, some software cut me off because uh, I'm messing with the new closed captioning system. And it does some rebroadcasting on one end, and that ended, timed out or something, so I had to restart it. So uh, you'll probably get a new notification that I'm back on live, and the old live link, you know, ends. <laughs> it's the way of, way of the internet. There one minute, gone the next. Alright, so hopefully though you got notified that I was back on a different way. So uh, you'll, you should still be getting closed captioning on the Facebook side. I just don't think you're going to be getting it on my YouTube side. I think I can only do it one versus two now. I think that was what happened. So I'll, I'll figure it out later, but right now that's the way things look. Uh, you can always type and leave your comments in the section as to whether or not um, those things are working. Okay, so back to here the storm in Oklahoma City. So as you can see, the uh, outflow boundary is basically like a mini cool front, by the way. That's kind of what they are. It's a little area of cooler wind and a north northwest wind behind it. Uh, and when storms are north of that boundary, like they are up here, they're not rooted, which means they're not anchored down to the surface. They're a little elevated. And so you usually just have some hail with these. It's very rare to get a tornado in a situation where it's, it's behind a boundary. Uh, the only way you can do that is that this boundary is so weak and so shallow that the mini cool air mass in it uh, isn't enough to overcome the beast you know that's moving through the area. In this case, this one isn't like that, so it's good. But now the southern end down here is right along the boundary, so that's what's going to kind of help to keep feeding the storm. We'll just have to see if it does anything with it. Now, what's happening here right now in the village? How about some heavy hail? So I'm seeing some purple in here on 124th Street, right along the between there, uh, MacArthur and um, Meridian. So this little neighborhood subdivision between 122nd, again, the turnpike, your guys are getting pounded with some pretty decent hail. It's probably golf ball size. Uh, let's see, down here in Mustang, also on the west side, you still have that large hail core uh, that we talked about earlier, and that's uh, west of Cemetery Road uh, and 152. Uh, so right now, hail is the prim primary issue going on. Let me look for anything else. Uh, by the way, the percentage of hail in here, uh, max hail size, golf balls, 1.86 is what the algorithms show. And the possibility of hail, of course, um, severe hail is quite high. See, this, this got hail now up to two inches in diameter. Um, so, <clears throat> 
I can show you that on another view. Uh, let me look up north real quick. And then we'll zip back down to the metro. <clears throat> so you guys up here in northern Oklahoma, you should have this straight line wind event going your way. This could be a small tornado up here northeast of Pawnee. This would be a QLCS type tornado we talked about. Like I said, they're kind of on the northern fringes of these little guys. Very hard to pick out. Um, it won't last long, but that would be a location, um, potential location. That's rolling Highway 20 uh, east of Ralston, moving kind of north uh, along that kind of rotates north along the boundary then dissipates. So that might be one there. Uh, very, very low in um, signature for it though. So, but I just want to throw that out there just in case there's no official warning for it. Uh, like I said, it'd be a small one. So back here in the Metro, um, let's zoom into this. Let me switch to uh, Twin Lakes and get a better view. Rain pretty heavy out there right now, of course. Said. We have a couple of areas of hail with this, and we're going to show you those here now that we're getting a little closer. Okay, so some decent hail cores right here north of the village. My goodness, uh, the DBZ values of around 63, uh, so that's pretty significant. Now, I let's see. I'm going to get some of this hail, looks like, myself. I'm going to tell you how big it is here in a minute. I don't want to tell you, but I'm about to tell you. I might even get one and show you. Oh, great. All right, well, I might need a new roof. Let's take a look at the uh, probability of severe hail Let's see if that thing's working for me. Uh, it's a little behind the curve. This one down here, though, it did have, uh, what's it, 90% probability of severe hail, hail in Mustang. Remember that little purple spot? So if it's doing it for that one, it's doing it for the one in Edmond. Once the algorithm catches up, it's usually like a, a volume scan behind. And it's got two inch size hail down there west of Mustang. So it's probably gonna be golf balls coming into my backyard here in a minute. Now that would tell me I need a new roof that's gonna hit me direct. So just to let you guys know. Uh, the other heavier, like I said, core of hail is over here west of Mustang along uh, I-40 and points south on 92. And that continues on down south to the river, just north of Tuttle. And we'll see if this, again, storm does anything else other than become a hail maker as it moves into Oklahoma City metro area. And right now, that's, that's what it's doing. Uh, let's see. some here real quick. So let's pin. So, um, you know, I had a little bit of hail, but uh, it wasn't bad, actually. I think I'm going to get saved. I think I'm going to be spared by the big ones down south. I didn't really hear much hit heavy-wise, but let me just check real quick. Be right back. Right now, I got some peas coming. Let's keep it peas, Mother Nature. Don't give me no big hail. So, uh, anyway, north side of uh, the town here between the village and Edmond is where this hail core is moving on through. And believe it or not, it's along the Memorial Turnpike, <sighs> just where it was the last time around when we had that big one go through town. So, right now, the, the heaviest core is at Pennsylvania. So, it's at Penn and Memorial is where the big hail is moving through as we speak and that'll moving in eastward from there so western's up next you know and then you got um santa fe and all that jazz so if you're in the uh, southern and southwest sides of edmond you're going to get hit with that hail also you're in the north sides of oklahoma city all right so back southwest even bigger hail is the ones down here by mustang coming out of town so if you live in mustang north side especially got some really nasty hail coming up on um what street is this Cedar, it's a little neighborhood, Cedar Branch Way. Basically, it's right along State Highway 4 on the north side of Mustang. So straight up north and then west by about a mile. There's Check Hall Road. So that's where you're going to get your next year bigger hail there. 
Uh, let's see here. Let me do. Let me show you. Okay, so these are all ping reports. So these ping reports show the hailstone sizes. And once they get up to around four, which is what they're doing, that's some big hail. So there's some big hail coming down here. Let me shorten this to about a 20 minute window. Yeah, so these are all relatively new. These are all in the last 20 minutes. So that's pretty significant. I'm hearing every now and then I'll hear a big one, but they're pretty small, which is good. I want to keep them that way. Okay, so anyway, that want to show you that. And then, uh, of course, a ton of lightning with this guy coming on the end of the metro. So there's a lot of lightning with this system that we're going to be dealing with. And then this is the potential for seeing a tornado. These little rings, how they're kind of centered over central Oklahoma. So the bullseye is right here over the metro. And climatology-wise, when you look at the algorithms um, and you look at the analogs for this event, uh, let's see, for significant tornadoes, they're all pretty much checked. And so in all tornadoes are pretty much checked, which means, according to this climatology map, which you see here, is a lot of tracks of tornadoes. Um, that's a lot to, to show that we should be getting a tornado with this situation. And these would be in the EF0 to EF1 category. That's where most of these resided with what we've got working with now. So, like I said, the atmosphere is primed for a tornado. We just have not seen one just because certain things just aren't quite coming together. We're missing something. And that's totally fine with me, but I'm just telling you we're missing something. Okay, so back in here real quick. Uh, let's see. Just snaking through. Just a little hailmaker. Uh, anything down. Bridge Creek, Amber, Chickasha, heavy rainfall. So, again, nothing tornadic. It's good news. Um, that part of the storm we were watching earlier, where it kind of had the outflow boundary feeding into it, lost it. So it's become elevated. So it's just a hail maker. So that's not going to do anything uh, here in the metro. All we're going to have to deal with is hail. Okay, just let you guys know that. Uh, let me look at this. See how these hailstones are. You know, the good news is, oh, this is great news. That, let's see, where's my hail core? If I turn on the hail core deal for Oklahoma City, those little pink areas, one, two, and three, is it as far as the significant hail that does damage. See, and, and see how low they are to the ground? They're not, uh, they're down here around 10,000, five to 10,000 feet. They're not up here at 30 to 40,000 feet. If they were, we'd have baseballs coming down. And so at most, we're going to have the, um, like I said, a few golf balls thrown in. Uh, I'd rather have that than baseballs. So that's the good news. You have to sometimes look at these things three-dimensionally to get an idea. Let's see, and that was, yeah, I'll try one more. Okay, nothing. Nothing and like it. Okay, and then I can always do this. So these would be basically, what value am I at? 55 dBZ is a good threshold to use for hail. So you can see these are, these are the hail cores here coming in, in the town. And they're all, this one's already fallen here on the north side of town. So it's, it's going bye-bye. These two are still going strong over here just around the Mustang area. So west southwest side of town, still gonna get some good hail out of these for a while. So it's gonna drop its load here on the southwest side of town, this area, as they trail this direction. Whereas this guy moving northeast has already dropped its load over uh, southwest Edmond, northern Oklahoma City. And matter of fact, it did drop this load right before it got to my house. So I'm totally good with that. So uh, there you go. Okay, so let me go back into this. Yeah, see all the, the pink that was there, the purple, it's all kind of faded away. We just have a few couple spots down here. This is coming up right along um, 77 and just north of the Memorial Road and right on Santa Fe. So that's the last little pocket of hail for this one as far as anything, you know, significant. So we're going to get some pea-sized these other ones, but not anything big. Um, and then down here, let's see, we got uh, one inch uh, hail reported and um, 
earlier east of Yukon. We've got one in Bethany, one inch size hail. So the ping report. Uh, oh, ping report. Let me go back to that. So one, two, one, two. So these are a lot smaller. Remember, we had some fours in there for the ping report earlier. Ping report is actually something you can do. You can volunteer or sign up for it. But basically, you send in whatever you see outside, and then it, it's an instant automatic plot. So it's kind of like how you can be your own weather watcher. And then all this data goes into a database, weather service sees it, I see it, TV guys see it, we all see it. And now we can help relay these reports. So how you get on that, I don't know. You have to contact um, the weather service or whatever, looking at looking at, Google it, I'm sure, and just see how you can do that. It might be a co-op thing where you know you've got to be some kind of you know, like to sign up or something. Uh, I don't do it because I'm busy doing this right here, so I wouldn't even know what's going on out there. <laughs> I depend on you for that. So, okay, so that's that's that. Let me go back to this. Um, let me go back up here up the line. Am I missing anything? Nope, still the same. Line of wind from Grainer to Schilder to Schindler to Fairfax, Cleveland, Hominy, all moving east. So nothing new there. Yale and Cushing, some pretty good thunderstorms, but nothing too crazy. You guys have a little bit of a warning in you. By far and large, the strongest storm, as far as any reflectivity values go and hail goes, would be the one coming in Oklahoma City. All right, and the tail end here, Bridge Creek. This is where the new, this is the outflow boundary here, feeding into it. So this would be the new storm to watch. The problem is it's got this stuff down here to its south, and that messes up the whole storm dynamics. See, it becomes linear. As long as a storm like this is linear, it has a very hard time doing anything tornadic, despite whatever else is going on. So it's, it's too many updrafts um, fighting each other out for dominance. It's like, you, like you're in the wild, and you've got a bunch of, uh, you got all these alphas challenging each other <laughs> to be king. So that's what's happening here. All right. Let's see. Anything on wind? Um, I might have a little bit of wind here. So pocket of wind was at 50 miles an hour. Yeah, it's not bad yet. It's on the um, where was that? Northeast of Mustang, three miles. So right along. What road is this? Center uh, Council. It's on Council. South of 40, by about two miles. So just a little tiny pocket of wind there. Let me go to our other high resolution radar and we'll see what kind of wind it's showing, if anything. Um, where'd that go? Right here. So, not yet. Okay, this little, there's an airport observation station, so I was just checking out the, the conditions in that. There was a lot to read in those things. All right, well, we're just watching a scraggly line of uh, storms moving through, which, believe it or not, have already started to lose their intensity, and which, believe it or not, matches the high-resolution model we saw earlier when uh, it forecast that that would happen. So these kind of went up real quick, dropped a load of hail, and then now they're on the way down. So we'll see what happens on the southern southern guys, but uh, the northern guys are rapidly weakening. Okay, let's go back to this. Okay, what about southern Oklahoma? I haven't checked on you guys in a while. So there's a new severe thunderstorm watch down here. Dallas storms are still knocking on your door. It's 10:30. My goodness. All right, so up here in Atoka, you guys are in the northern fringe of this line. Uh, you got some hail indentations of a teeny tiny pea size so nothing nothing right home about uh, even south of you doesn't look all that impressive so pea size hail but uh, I think your biggest threat anyway was just the winds uh, within this so uh, go ahead and bring that up I don't see any wind reports so that's good all right I think let's go uh, let's go check out Dallas Should we do Dallas see if there's anything down there Let's just go do Dallas. So we'll give that a minute to load. Um, let's take a look at Oklahoma City real quick. Nothing there. And then I've got this thing up. What's this thing doing? Oh, we do a storm track on here. So um, I haven't done that. 
Got it moving east at 31 with a max hail size of just under golf balls, inch and a half. Okay, so let's do that. It's the leading edge. Okay, so obviously Oklahoma City here within literally the next few seconds. And then we've got um, Arcadia, Forest Park, Newcastle. Blanchard, Valley Brook, Dell City, Spencer Moore, Midwest City, all in the next 10 minutes. Jones, Luther, Nicoma, Choctaw, Norman, all with the next 20 minutes to 30 minutes. So there you go. There's your there's your uh, track for these guys. Oh, good. Some new uh, hail reports came in. Ooh, and I'm seeing lots of pings on here. So let's go ping them, and we're going to see what happens. Okay. So this is Piedmont, east of Piedmont. Where'd this go? Get in here. One inch there. Um, here is a ping, half inch hail. This is this is Memorial, by the way, and on the west side of northwest side of town. Um, let's see. Let's go more here, part of Edmond. Let's see. There's P. Oh, good grief! That's all we got, guys. P size. A lot of P size. I got P size in my house. And that was about it. And that was when that heavy core was just about to come get me. Ironically, I don't have any good hail cores reports for where we had that um, strong area here on the north side of the village we're missing there's a hole here so I need, I need to get some reports right here that's where we had the hail core come in all right let's see what else we got rain and snow well that's good somebody reported rain and snow and here's another one <laughs> just kidding it's probably just picking up something else half inch of uh rain looks like okay so we got some hail reports here notes side notes none just a hail all right you guys are real thorough here we go lawn furniture trash cans displaced now that's a report that's some wind damage you see that report category wind damage <laughs> i don't know if that quite qualifies but whatever so half inch size hail so here's a river creek overflowing down here category on the southwest of yukon so it's kind of a neat little deal. Like I said, if you guys want to be a part of that, um, check in with the weather service. There's Google uh, how to how to be one of the pingers, and then um, we'll see. So there's some more hail going down there. Tuttle, you guys, by the way. So uh, let's see, and more development down to Chickasha, uh, going in right into town. So if you're in Chickasha, you're wondering what's our threat? Some hail north side of town, but um, nothing you're not uh, unaccustomed to. Okay, so Dallas, I want to chime in there real quick. These guys up here, the door, are they even moving? Hold on a second. That's where these guys were the last time we looked. Sure enough, they're just sitting there. Well, might get some flash flooding going on up there. Eventually, though, this, this line right here is going to come east and jack all this up, so that'll be the end of that. And then down here in southwestern uh, Tarrant County, this stuff coming on end, it's just uh, not much right home about it. Heavy thunderstorms. Here's some pockets of wind with it. Like here's one around 50 miles an hour. So, oof, Dallas can get off easy, looks like, um, tonight, unless something crazy happens. So that's good. And you're still getting some, you know, rough and loud thunderstorms, but as far as damaging hail and damaging winds and tornadoes, looks like you might have dodged a bullet. And again, Southeast Oklahoma, we talked to them already. Okay, so that was that. was that. Let me go back into Oklahoma City. Like I said, we have a severe thunderstorm warning that continues. Uh, I don't think I ever read the wording on that. But basically, uh, moving northeast at 20 with 60 mile per hour winds, quarter size hail. So, radar indicated numerous reports from spotters, the hailstones. Yeah, all these little... Uh, yellow things on here, one inch size hail reported from public storm chasers and all that kind of stuff. So there you go, a lot of one inch size hail reports. <coughs> okay, so let's uh, get back to here. Let me check out the wind speeds. Probe a little bit of this, 50 miles an hour, 55, it's about the best I can do you for. Um, come in right here on the split from 44 and 240, so just west of there, like 
three blocks, three miles, and you're going to find some winds up around close to uh, 58 miles an hour. And 58, by the way, is the criteria for a severe thunderstorm. So you got to have winds of 58 miles per hour and or hail the size of an inch, of course, and or tornado. But if it's a tornado, they would do a tornado warning rather than a severe thunderstorm warning. So this is on a borderline severe thunderstorm warning criteria because we've got the hail reports of one inch, but that's been, yeah, we haven't had anything bigger than that come in yet. All right, my phone's blowing up, so let me just see if anything important. So my friend Luke says, sorry, I didn't know you were still live. I'm a jerk. <laughs> yes, you are, Luke. <laughs> no, you're fine. All right, let me check what storm chasers say. They're out there. They've been out there today. Just there wasn't anything to write home about. Um, okay, I got it. Hail size increasing. What time was this? A few minutes ago. Southwest 59th and County Line and quarters at Sarah and Highway 4. Okay, so a little bit of hail action down there. Uh, ooh, what's that doing? Let me go look at this real quick. From a different radar. Get this one back up here to Oak City. And then let's go to this one. Okay. So basically, I was starting to see an inflow notch here with that boundary riding into it. And so it got my attention. So I had to stop, pause, and analyze. Let's see, anything else? Okay. Let's see, a little patch of uh, green, so that's the 55 miles per hour right along the river. Yeah, right along the river and um, County Line Road. A little bit of wind with that one. But this is a, by the way, this is a dual split panel. So on your map here, this is a Z and this is V. And you're like, what's Z, what's V? Z stands for reflectivity, V stands for velocity. So this is wind, and this is just basically your rain. So sometimes I'll do a split panel because I want to see at the same time what's in the storm so I can visualize what's happening. And so sometimes I'll split it. Other times I'll just keep it just like the one panel. Okay, so for example, this is just one panel, just reflectivity only. Okay, so, interesting. All right, um, what did the weather service say? Hi, KDP on the north side of Oklahoma City. What was that? Oh, just now. Oh, yeah, look at there. <laughs> so I don't use this button a whole lot. Anyway, so KDP, that's what this value is here. All these bright colors. Indicates melting of bigger hailstones into smaller hailstones. And this should get an enhancement on the ZDR. Okay, we do. So it's red in the same area. Um, so it's small hail would not be big hail. So those two tell me small hail, but a lot of it. And that's what all this, uh, okay, that makes sense, because here's the reflectivity, which is heightened with a lot of purple. All right, so typically what I told you, the purple would indicate you know large hail, like golf ball size in this case. However, if you have a plethora of small, tiny hail, the radar can't tell the difference, and it thinks all these tiny hailstones are big hail, or like one big hailstone. So it trips the uh, colors and the algorithms to think, hey, that's a uh, large hailstone, so it paints it, you know, the, the purple color. Cool. So there you go. That was a little baby hailstorm right on the split of 44 and 235. So looks like most of us dropped its load uh, just in that last scan. I went back here. Yeah, because purple's going right through the heart of the city. And then things are gone. So I bet you if I go upstairs and look, uh, those cores will be dropped. Yeah. So here's the north side downtown area here. And this is in the southwest side. So when I turn this back three-dimensional, 
downtown has all fallen down and this guy still has to fall down so this has got a ways to go so you're, this is your next core dump there all right and that's on the south side 240 coming at you and uh, 44 oh let's see I don't want to do that um, what else can I show you if I split this this way how does that look Hmm. It's too far. It's another way to visualize those, um, what I just showed you a moment ago. I just couldn't get it to draw the bucks. Here we go. So, this is slice in the atmosphere. The other one was like a 3D. This is just a two dimensional slice. So, there's 20,000 feet. So there's a hail core that's got to come down. These already did. So, they're all down here now at the bottom. So, this particular cell dropped its load and it's now weakening. This cell here is in the process of dropping its load, and when it does, it'll weaken just like this one, and all this bigger hail, well, in this case, not bigger hail, it's going to be a multiple of baby hail, will come down the surface. So that probably explains earlier why I only got pea-sized hail, but it was raining to beat the band, and just south of me, uh, the most we got out of that, those reports, remember there's a lot of reports, like half-inch size, and that was it. That makes sense. All right. Okay, so where are we now? Bridge Creek, a little bit of wind out here. Let me go to the Windmaker. Uh, that's not the Windmaker. This is Windmaker. Now let's see what they look like. All right, so 53 down here in the Bridge Creek area. It's not as in, on this radar. It's not as strong. It's like 44. Uh, the other radar was closer. It had 53, I think. So only a couple of pockets of wind, and there's not even that severe. So like I said, it's been a bunch of small hail. So this particular severe thunderstorm warning is actually really technically not verifiable, meaning it's not technically severe, but uh, we'll see. Um, okay, so they got, what's happened up here? Tulsa. Tulsa issue, looks like a tornado warning for Osage County. All right, let's go take a look. So, way up here, north of Tulsa. All right, it's gonna be coming into Bartlesville. So this is our first official tornado warning of the state, believe it or not, uh, for since, uh, what, six o'clock? So let's take a look at this. So let's load that up. So while that's loading, let me just look here in Oklahoma City one last time. All right, so we'll come back. So again, heavy rainfall, a little baby hail here in Oklahoma City. Uh, no traumatic potential right now. Things are looking good. And the wind field just should be a little more chaotic. Yeah, I'm missing data too, so. Um, okay, so we'll come back to that. Let's go up here, northern Oklahoma again, Paul Huska. And let's see what, um, what the data looks like. Matter of fact, I may switch this radar up there too. Massive cell detected. Severe hail detected. So it's a tornado possible tag, which means for the warning it's not sighted by anyone. It just means dot the radar indicated. So on this little box here it says tornado radar indicated, uh, potential tornado. Uh, hail probability 80%, small hail with it. Oh, okay, they warned them to QLCS tornado. Remember that? Remember how I was telling you about those? So that's what they did here. That's what this little inflow notch is. That's all that is. So that's the leading edge. It's a QLCS tornado they warned on. And so that's what it looks like. So on that leading edge, and there's that little um, kind of a closed off appearance just right here. And so that's why the tornado warning. So there you go. Good call on that one. So, you know, be in your shelters if you live in the Bartlesville area. Let me see this thing load up. Okay, so yeah, right now it's just east of Paul Huska. You know, I'm going to butcher that Nalogany, but uh, I believe that's how you pronounce it. I don't ever remember saying that town name though when I was at KTOL for two years. Could have, but I don't remember. Uh, let's see, otherwise, wind speeds looks like around 65 miles per hour. So, within this little south end of the circulation. So, back at you have zero 
type tornado is what that looks like. But let's see, we're at uh, 3,000 feet, 3,500 feet. So you might get a couple more of these uh, in this area since you're closer to the area of low pressure we mentioned in the book in Vortex. So again, if you're in Bartlesville, uh, odds are this this one circulation here will, will vaporize and possibly a new one will form, but uh, just in case it does somehow hold together and arrives, you do need to be in your trail shelter. So basically, you need to be in the center part of your home. And uh, when you do that, um, you want to be lowest floor, away from outside walls, windows, that kind of deal. You can be in the bathroom, a closet, uh, wherever you feel comfortable, you know, wherever yours is a good place for you, with you and your family. Uh, it's late at night, so you won't be able to see it coming. Uh, there won't be storm trackers out there that with very good visibility. So just go ahead and just take it serious and, and, and ride it out. It won't last long. It'll be on the low end of strength, which is good. So this again, a tornado warning up here in northeast Oklahoma. Uh, quarter size hail otherwise, and we mentioned some winds up around 65 plus uh, in this little section east of town. Uh, let's do a track on that. So Bartlesville at 1103, Dewey, Juan, and Lenape about 11, uh, 11 28. It won't last that long. It'll be long gone by then, but it could potentially hang in some remnants of it uh, toward Bartlesville. So there you go. So there's the, there's the latest on that. Again, trade a warning. It's in northeast Oklahoma, not in Oklahoma City. Nowhere near us. Uh, it's going to be heading up you know, close to the Kansas border here. That part of the line here soon. Uh, this line trails all the way back down now into central Oklahoma, now pushing through Oklahoma City down just east of Chickasha. And you got some more development way down there in North Texas and then also far southeast Oklahoma. So, this is again trade possible. It has not been sighted, it's just a dot the radar indication. So, we're looking at the uh, velocity signature here. So, like I said earlier, about 58. There was, a, I think I measured a 60 earlier. Okay, I just got a new scan in, so I dropped it down. There's 60 miles per hour incoming. Now, I mean, let's see what, oh, I see. It's overlapping, okay. Uh, let's see here, what else we got? Okay, this product's working again. So, down, this is called downdraft potential. Earlier we had some winds that were up around 80 to 90 miles per hour, but they were several thousand feet in the air. Uh, these are This is measuring down a little lower, and the winds are coming around around 50 to 60 miles per hour. So still some damaging straight line winds with this line outside of this little potential tornado threat for you guys here in northern Oklahoma. So there's your circulation. It's not overly impressive uh, on radar, but these types aren't. They usually are not. Um, these QLCS trainers are very hard to see as it is. Look at some of these parameters. I don't see any debris from this being kicked up. So that's good. At least that from that view. Let me try this view. Uh, we're still on this one, right? Uh, let's try that again. Okay. There's the. Circulation there. Okay. So this is, I'm, I'm looking at the circulation, which is right here on the bottom of the map. And then I'm looking vertically aloft to see how it extends up. And it's, it's not very impressive. Now I'm looking for um, debris for that area. And that's not there either. So good news is that it may not even be a train on the ground. Um, that's a redundant word to say, because if that's the case, it'd be a funnel. So right now it's a broad circulation, so it may mean there's no tornado at all. However, the warning continues because I can't see a good indication on radar. So, um, but again, we're also at 
3,000 feet, so some of these may be a little uh, lower in altitude, making those harder to see. But always treat a trailer warning serious and always, of course, take cover from one. So you guys up here north of Tulsa in the Barsville area, you would need to definitely take shelter for that one. Let me recalculate wind speeds. Uh, what are we? 49, 50, 55, yeah, okay. So a little broad. I like to see it a little tighter for a uh, particular uh, tornadic type situation, but it doesn't take much sometimes on these little QLCSs. It's, um, they, they, they go by a different, they, they go by a different drum. What's that saying? I, th I think it did half the saying. They call the beat to a different drum. There you go. <laughs> I was missing something in that saying. Come on, brain. All right, so anyway, that's uh, what's happening there in northern Oklahoma and north of Tulsa. This stuff back here is southwest. Um, I don't think it's going to be able to produce a tornado. Yeah, the outflow boundary is here. And this stuff is all behind it. This is all junk, junk storms. So Tulsa, I don't think you have anything to worry about with these junk storms. Um, this boundary would have to stop moving for one and retrograde a bit and then these would have to somehow ride the boundary and come up and I'm just that's a long shot of a long shot you know then you get better odds going on the quarter horses so yeah the circulation uh, what the service just said the circulation is broadened but remains present so they kind of agree with me that it's, it's, you really can't find a, a tornado indication, but they're going to keep the warning going just because a little area is still present. It's just hard. It's going to be hard to find. Okay, let me quickly uh, check Oak City. See if anything's changed. Nope. Garden variety thunderstorms moving through. No big deal. Not even much wind with it. Little pocket there north of Newcastle. Well, it already dissipated. It was around 50. 62 and 44. All right, well, that's this is nothing right on about this. This this event's done for Oklahoma City. <clears throat> if you live south and east of Oklahoma City, there's still events still done. It's, it's doing exactly what the model said, which is fall apart. So, let's see, let's go back. The only storm really in town worth looking at is this one up here north of Tulsa. The really broad circulation. And no sign of any tragic debris. It's good. That's why I like it. Okay, so. That's all I got for you, friends. That's that's basically basically the latest. Let me clear that and do another one. Uh, latest on that Bartlesville here. It says 11:05, but it's probably gonna be there before 11:05. Dewey, Juan, and Linda Pot still in the path. Okay, back to, let's do some spectrum width. Let's get that off of there. Um, CBR, no. CC, no. Storm relative, nope. Yeah, I just can't find anything to confirm that type of a deal. But, you know, lines still have some good wind with it, close to 60 miles per hour. So you guys up there in, uh, again, north of Tulsa, that's what you're going to have to deal with. Other outside of the uh, small tornado threat, again, in Bartlesville, 
you got plenty of time to be in your shelters. You got another 10 minutes before it arrives, but I wouldn't spend those 10 minutes just doing nothing. You know, if you're watching me, for example, you can take your phone or your uh, tablet to your safe place and just watch it there, stream on your Wi Fi. Uh, go to your shelter. Uh, let's see, back down the line for West Tulsa. So, some garden variety thunderstorms. There's not even any warnings on them, they're that weak. The last uh, strong one is there in Oklahoma City. And even that, for us, isn't uh, all that impressive. So we didn't even really get any really good hail out of it as far as, you know, extremely large. It was mostly a bunch of small hail. Biggest reports we have is one inch in diameter, which again is barely uh, severe thunderstorm threshold limits. It's most I've seen. The warning continues though for the eastern half of Oklahoma city and that stretches on down toward Moore and Blanchard so right now the biggest hail indications are right around Blanchard so you guys algorithm is going to run an inch in diameter so that's par for the course so uh, that's what you can expect we can take a look I'll split the difference oh that's um, I'm seeing this from Tulsa that's right I need to switch that Let's do that real quick. Okay, up here, well that's loaded on the other radar. I was gonna go back to this one just to keep that up. It's been a pretty good clip. Try this one. Didn't like that product. There we go. Still broad uh, rotation, so again, nothing tight. Probably still breezing some wind, though, straight line winds. Remember, if you got a 65 to 70 mile per hour wind, that's very close to a very weak tornado. Okay, so. This thing's loading now for Oklahoma City, so let's go back in here and see what's become of our rainmaker, let's call it, because that's what it is. day as my phone just blows up imagine that <laughs> all right so there's some heavy rain just totally lame this is like nothing it's not even worth even talking about just heavy rain moving through more beneficial rain more drought prevention that's what I call it pockets just a small hill down here in Blanchard like I mentioned before um, let's go upstairs that's what I was gonna do was take a vertical slice see if there's anything to write home about uh, let's see Nope, little pocket there. And no. Uh, 30,000 feet storm. So not even really, well, 40,000. Not quite as tall as before. So they're coming down. Less energy to work with. Loss of that daytime heating from the sun changes everything. All right. So, uh, any win with this? little bit of pocket of wind right there. What is that? Uh, whopping 60 miles an hour. There you go. 62. Highway 62 right along the river. North Folk, excuse me, not, not the river, but the North Folk Walnut Creek Stream. Yeah, if you live where that is, you know where that is. That's right along 62. Just moved north of there on 77 though. Uh, the next update. Just to south of Newcastle by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 from downtown. So, Okay, so there you go. I say downtown, but you know what I mean. Uh, let's see, anything else? Up here, Midwest City, there's some pockets of winds up around 50, and that's right along Sooner Road, between 40 and 240. Again, 50 is not severe, but it's windy. And then you got the heavy rainfall. All right, and I'm sure you got a lot of lightning. Well, how's the lightning look? 
first off, here's some more hail reports. See all those ones? Those ones indicate um, tiny, tiny, small hail, like a quarter inch in diameter. So pea sized hail and stuff. A lot of those. So those are the pings. Um, lightning, like I said, ton of that right here where the metro, all these little white positive flashes. Another way of seeing that, if this will load, here we go. So a lot of lightning associated with this. Whoa, where are we going? Back out there. Easy there, Sparky. So, Sparky, get it, lightning, spark. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> There's some more out right there going through the city. Okay, and then, um, I'm surprised it didn't show me the hail swath. I wonder why. I think this thing's working. Hold on a second. So, maybe if I change something, something's wrong with this thing. I'm going to refresh it. Let's see if I can get this thing to work. There's like something over it. It usually shows me like expected hail size, hail swath, but this thing's being really weird. It's like it's not working. Well, there's something. All right, something does work on it, but not the stuff I want. Here's rotation. That's not working. This was all working earlier today. So lame. Maybe they, maybe they're having data problems. That's probably what's happening. All right. Well, then forget that nonsense. Okay. So. You know, this this uh, thing I've been using for analogs and historical reference, I have yet to see this thing pan out. And I use it every time because that's what we have to go with. And it still doesn't seem to jive with reality. I'm telling you, man, it's uh, severe weather is a whole different game than animal. What we do is every time we have these events, we catalog as much as we can about it, put it in a database, and then we reference it against other databases, and we try to pull out similarities, and then we base forecast models off of that, and indices off of that, and stuff like tonight happens, you're just like, this is all worthless. <laughs> but, hey, you know, it just means there's more room for improvement in the world of meteorology. All right, so we got a ways to go before we master this craft. That's what I'm trying to tell you. All right, heavy rainfall moving to the metro. Tail end of Blanchard is the last part of this storm line, and that's it. Down here in south, nothing happening. Dallas getting some baby thunderstorms moving in. No big deal, not even severe. So you guys are good. Like we talked about earlier, the warning for north of Tulsa has been canceled. Looks like that little circulation kind of filled in somewhat, remained broad. I think they gave up on it. It's, it's still there, believe it or not. Yeah, it's just so broad, it's just not going to do anything. But it's still there, so maybe potentially something else could happen. So wouldn't take much, but uh, if you're in Bartlesville, it's it's right on top of you, that area of circulation. So, But there's no more tornado warning, so the Weather Service canceled it. You can just wait a few minutes. It'll be past you, and then you can come on out if you are still in your shelter. Uh, let's see. That's that's it. That's, that's the last storm of any consequence. None of these are severe. And the one down here in the metro, like I said, it's technically not even severe. I can't find any severe reports to uh, back the warning criteria up for. So that tells me this show's over, folks, which means it's 11 o'clock. And I get to get ready for bed. You get to get ready for bed. And we can all put this day behind us of our uh, storm system. The way it goes so man last little bit of hail highway 9 and 62 Let's see here got a little wind with it up around 58 miles per hour looks like bills are very low a lot of melting droplets so very small tiny hail that's it. All right. Well, that bores me to tears. I don't know about you. That does nothing for me. So, 
with that said, hey, I want to thank you for watching, telling your friends and family about uh, AT's weather and the live uh, storm coverage. Um, we finally actually had a tornado warning in the state this evening. Uh, and it was in northern Oklahoma, and it was for a QLCS tornado, and it didn't last very long. And as far as I could tell, over Osage County, it was over open area. And it wasn't anything confirmed. It didn't do any damage because I didn't see any debris signature from it. So it means it probably didn't touch down. So, so far, knock on wood, it's good. Of course, we had the storms earlier in the day, around 4 or 5 o'clock, that came over um, from the Texas Panhandle. Those packed a little bit of a punch there early on, then those diminished. And really, so that was it. I mean, the body of the state, as far as severe weather goes, didn't see a whole lot, just a couple of areas. But it kind of jived with the model day that I showed you the last couple of days and the forecasts of the areas to watch. So the forecast was good for my end. I don't know what other people were telling you, but for my end, that's what the forecast was. So that worked out. Um, and even here in the metro, that the fact that it was supposed to get that second wave built up and then weaken as it came through, the models indicated that as well, so that actually panned out, so that was good. Um, but even though the wind was there for a while and the instability was there for a while, for the tornado threat, it just never happened. And like I said, there's a lot of things, times that we, um, you know, just don't know enough when it comes to tornadoes. We still got more studying to do. So, but, um, yeah, that's it. All right, so that's it for me. Ladies and gentlemen, hey, appreciate your time. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, closed captioning for those that uh, watch that and utilize that part of this uh, broadcast. And um, I think toward the end of no uh, November, no, Aaron, <laughs> toward the end of April, we should get a few active days looking at some of the long range computer data. So until then, it may be kind of quiet. I have a little system on Sunday. Matter of fact, you know what? If you want to hang in there, I can pop up some maps. I haven't looked at anything, so I'll be going cold, but it's all right. Uh, let's just do that real quick. I'll just show you a couple of them. And then we'll turn you loose. Which one do I want to show you? Yeah, we... Mm, let's do this one. Alright. Preset convection. We'll just make this easy and short and sweet. Oh, all right. Go for an older run. Uh, I don't know if I want to do the 18Z. Let's go 12Z. All right. Let's see. Coming up down the pike here. What day is this? Monday. Couple of storms. On let's see. That's Sunday. Try to get going on Sunday, but nothing really happens. Then Monday happens. Couple of storms are north of Kansas. Looks like we'll probably be capped. And then Monday, some storms come in Monday night and a Tuesday morning with the front. Kind of redevelop storms Tuesday afternoon on the 23rd. So we'll see what we got of that. Uh, then that moves south. And then where's our next round of storms? Oh, come on. There's got to be something. That's it? That's the lamest pattern I've ever seen. Here's one May 3rd for something that'll come on in. Now again, this is just one model, just one run. When I actually looked at this model, was it a couple days ago? Um, on the 23rd, or no, the 26th, 7th, and 8th, it actually had an active pattern. And here it's got a, the ridge of high pressure building in. Like in other words, a surface high to uh, bring us some really nice weather. Mm -hmm. That's the way that stuff goes. Ridiculous. TVSL detected. Where? Show me. You lying to me over here? What do you got? Oh, there's something. Let's go look. All right. So, like I said, the uh, I mean the long range. I don't know what to tell you about that nonsense. All right. Which one are you? Cell D seven. No. I think you're just smoking something here. Algorithms. I can't even see the D7. It's got to be this one. I don't see it though. Da -da. There's nothing there though. 
Nope, nope, nope. All right. All right, whatever. Okay, I'm out of here, my friends. Again, <laughs> I have a tendency to say goodbye like three times, and I actually mean it on the third time. <laughs> First two times, I'm just kidding. But uh, third time, I mean it. All right, listen, you guys get some sleep. I'm glad you are with me to ride this out. And normally, I do not stay on like this for just garden variety thunderstorms. But if this is the only storm we get for the whole month, I guess I might as well do it. But anyways, we did have a couple of tornadoes to make it, you know, valid. So uh, anyway, while I was covering it live, just one in Kansas and then uh, one in northern Oklahoma, uh, north of Tulsa, and that was it. So okay, I'm out of here. You guys get some sleep. My throat's dry out anyway. I'm going to start to sound like I'm uh, going to come and collect some money, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> my throat's getting dry. All right, I'm out of here. You guys have a good night. Bye.